A 42-year-old builder is referred to the emergency department by his general practitioner. He was bending down to pick up a sack of cement mixed yesterday when he felt a sudden shooting pain down both his legs. Sounds like a reticulopathy. Since then, he continued to have shooting pain in his buttocks and down the back of his both legs. He had a similar episode two years ago, which only involved one leg. He says it improved with physiotherapy and paracetamol. He currently has no urinary incontinence, no re or retention, but does report hesitancy and terminal dribbling since this morning. He could feel himself wiping the area. Dangerous of spinal cord compression. Examination of his respiratory, cardiovascular, and abdominal systems are normal. On neurological examination, his cranial nerves are normal. His Glasgow Coma score, GCS is 15 out of 15. Inspection tone, power reflexes, coordination, and sensation are all normal in the upper limbs. In the lower limbs, there is 3 out of 5 power of plantar flexion of fluid, foot, 4 out of 5 power on dorsiflexion. Oh, so there's weakness. In the lower limbs, there is 3 out of 5 power of plantar flexion of the foot foot and 4 out of 5 power on dorsiflexion. So flexion is stronger than extension in this case. All other modalities show 5 out of 5 power. Patella tendon reflex was normal. Patella tendon reflex was normal but his Achilles tendon reflex was absent. Absent reflexes. Sounds more like a lower motor neuron. Sensation was slightly reduced over the back of his leg and medial aspect of his calf. Slightly reduced over the back of his leg and medial aspect of his calf. What nerve? Is it a peroneal nerve? Which of the following is the single best investigation to evaluate this patient's symptoms and signs? Why does it look like a lower motor neuron lesion on reflexes? However, the urinary dribbling, when did it start? Since this morning, this is very worrying. So I would like to rule out a spinal compression, cord compression. So MRI spine is indicated. Let's look at the other options. CT myelography of the whole spine. CT cannot see soft tissue, so that's not the correct one. Magnetic resonance imaging. Prostate and prostate-specific antigen. You're suspecting prostate, prostate enlargement. Not so worrying at the moment. He had this sudden back pain yesterday. So... Spine compression is the more worrying issue here. Serum protein electrophoresis and urinary bands Jones protein. What is this for? Multiple myeloma, is it? X ray, spine, pelvis, and hips with anterior posterior lateral views. It's not going to see much on this X ray. Probably nothing wrong with his bones anyway. So, MRI is the answer. Yes. Corda equina syndrome may present with bilateral sciatica. This patient has presented with acute onset bilateral sciatica with associated urinary symptoms which appear before incontinence or retention after a triggering event. He has a high risk occupation and is the right age group for this prolapse, 42 years old, to be the most likely reason for his presentation. This has impinged on the lower motor neurons at this level causing Corda equina syndrome. So corda equina syndrome is the lower motor neuron lesion, huh? This tends to affect 1 to 15% of patients, commonly males, between the ages of 40 and 60. The distribution of his symptoms all fit with a prolapse disc at the L5-S1 nerve root. MRI is the imaging of modality of choice, which will show cord signal increase in t 2 weighted series. It can help prognosticate the condition about the recovery of function and allows guided surgical management. Corda equina is an emergency and should always be considered in patients presenting in this way as it can cause a lasting neurological deficit. CT myelography has largely been replaced by MRI. It is, however, still used for patients with implanted pacemakers, which are MRI incompatible. MRI machines can also be unsuitable for patients with claustrophobia. Hmm. MRI of the prostate and 
PSA would be useful for patients suspect of prostate cancer. Whilst this may be possible in this patient, his symptoms would be slower in onset and you would expect this to be present later on in life. Regardless of the cause, he still presented with other neurological symptoms which require investigation more urgently. Serum protein electrophoresis and urinary band Jones proteins is used to evaluate the presence of multiple myeloma. While this could be a cause of the man's symptoms, he is young, and an MRI would remain a single best investigation as it will guide management. X-rays are likely to give sufficient information about the extent of cord impingement, although it could be possible to visualize the prolapse disc. There are also false risk false positive findings. More about Koda Equina syndrome. Koda Equina syndrome, CES, is a rare but serious condition in, a in which the lumbar sacral nerve roots that extend below the spinal cord are compressed. It is important to consider CES in any patients who presents with new worsening lower back pain, leg diagnosis may lead to permanent nerve damage resulting in long-term leg weakness and urinary bowel incontinence. Causes. The most common cause is a central disc prolapse. The typical this typically occurs in L4, L5, or L5S1. Other causes include tumors, primary or metastatic, infection, abscess, or discitis, trauma, hematoma. It is important to recognize CES may, that CES may present in a variety of ways, and there is no one symptom or sign that can diagnose or nor exclude CES. Possible features include low back pain, bilateral sciatica, present in around 50% of cases, reduced sensation of pins and needles in the perianal area, decreased anal tone. It's good practice to check the anal tone in patients with new onset back pain. However, studies show this has poor sensitivity and specificity for CES. Urinary dysfunction, incontinence, reduced awareness of blood filling, loss of urge to void. Incontinence is a late sign that may indicate irreversible damage. Investigation and urgent MRI. Management surgical decompression. Ah, okay. Osmosis has a video on Corda Equina syndrome. Let's have a look. Learning medicine is hard work. Osmosis makes it easy. It takes your luck questions. Cauda equina syndrome is a condition caused by damage to the bundle of peripheral nerves protruding from the bottom of the spinal cord, called the cauda equina. The Latin words cauda equina means horsetail, which is what early anatomists thought the nerve bundle looked like. The spinal column is made of individual bones, called vertebrae. Each vertebra is made of a large anterior portion called the body and the posterior part called the vertebral arch. The central cavity between the body and the arch is called the vertebral foramen. Now the spinal column is made of 33 vertebrae, seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, and four coccygeal. Each cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebra is separated by an inner vertebral disc, which allows for a slight movement of the vertebrae and acts as a shock absorber. The sacral and coccygeal vertebrae are fused together to form the sacral bone and coccyx, or tailbone, respectively. Now, if you cut the spinal column in half lengthwise, you can see that all the vertebral foramina together form the vertebral, or the spinal canal, which is occupied by the spinal cord. The spinal cord is connected to the brain and travels through the spinal canal to the second lumbar vertebra, where it ends in a cone, called the conus medullaris. There are 31 pairs of nerves originating from the spinal cord called spinal nerves. There are eight cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, and one coccygeal. Each nerve leaves the spinal canal through the corresponding intervertebral foramen, which are openings between two adjacent vertebrae. Since the spinal cord is shorter than the spinal canal, the nerves of the lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal regions have to travel down the spinal canal to reach their corresponding openings, forming a nerve bundle below the spinal cord called the cauda equina. These nerves carry motor innervation for the genitals, both internal and external anal sphincters, detrusor vesicae, which is a muscle in the bladder that contracts during urination, and muscles of the leg. They're in charge of the knee and ankle reflexes. Skin sensations of the leg and pelvis are also carried by these nerves. Cauda equina syndrome is caused by compression, 
trauma, or damage to multiple nerves of the cauda equina. Large lumbar disc herniation is the most common cause of cauda equina syndrome. And poor posture, traumas, physical activity, and strong rotational movement can cause herniations where the intervertebral disc bulges out and compresses the nerves or spinal cord. This is similar to sciatica, but the herniation is usually larger and more nerves are compressed, including those that control the bladder and reproductive organs. Compression can also be caused by spinal stenosis, which is the narrowing of the vertebral foramen in the lumbar vertebrae. It can be congenital, meaning that the person is born with it, or acquired, usually due to degenerative disorders like ankylosing spondylitis, where the bones remodel, causing intervertebral disc ossification, and the narrowing of the spinal canal. Another cause is spondylolisthesis, where a lumbar vertebrae is displaced. This can be caused by trauma, surgery, or degenerative spinal disease. The most common type of lumbar spondylolisthesis is anterolisthesis, where a vertebra moves forward and narrows the spinal canal, causing compression of the nerves. Finally, any trauma to the spine, like the one caused by a car crash, gunshot, etc., can lead to nerve damage or compression directly, or by causing bleeding inside the spinal canal causing compression via hematomas. Finally, any growth within the spinal canal, like tumors, cysts, or abscesses, can cause compression on the spinal cord and nerves. Symptoms of cauda equina include decreased bowel and bladder control due to a decreased tone of anal sphincters and muscle wall of the bladder, as well as decreased sexual function. It can also cause saddle anesthesia, which is a loss of sensation in the saddle area, which includes the buttocks, and inner surface of the thigh and perineum. One or both legs can be impaired by muscle weakness, loss of knee and ankle reflexes, and even paraplegia, which is when the affected person loses all feeling and muscle control in the legs. Sometimes there can be sciatic pain, which is a sharp pain going down the back and leg. Diagnosis of cauda equina syndrome is usually based on the pattern of sensory and motor nerve findings and confirmed by an MRI or a CT scan. The treatment of cauda equina syndrome depends on the cause. If it was caused by disc herniation, trauma, tumors, or abscess, the symptoms appeared suddenly and the surgical decompression should be performed within 48 hours. Abscesses should also be treated with antibiotics. However, if it's caused by degenerative disease, then symptoms appear more gradually, and it's treated with anti-inflammatory medications and corticosteroids. All right, as a quick recap, cauda equina syndrome is a condition caused by damage or compression to the nerves or cauda equina. The most common cause is lumbar disc herniation. And typical symptoms include decreased urinary and bowel control, decreased sexual function, and saddle anesthesia. Depending on the cause, cauda equina syndrome could be treated surgically, as well as by anti-inflammatory medications or by antibiotics. Very informative. So now we know why it's a lower motor neuron lesion, because cauda equina syndrome is a lower motor neuron lesion. The spinal cord only reaches about L1 or L2, and then after that, it's known as a cauda equina which are bundles of nerves that come out from the spinal cord. Hence why its reflex is absent, indicating lower motor neuron lesion rather than hyperreflexia, which is a upper motor neuron lesion. Okay.